The European mind can't comprehend this. You can say that about a lot of things, but when people do, it's mostly about stuff in America. Like, a lot of the food we got here, trucks lifted to the height of skyscrapers, and all these clogged up roads that we got. Listen guys, one more lane and LA traffic will be fixed. I swear! It's mostly a tongue-in-cheek thing that us Yankees have said to jab at Europeans when they insult their way of life that they aren't so familiar with. It also exists in the opposite way, where Euro nerds will say, the American mind can't comprehend this, and it's usually like a picture of free healthcare or something. I'm not gonna get too deep into that side of the fight, but if this video does well, maybe I will sometime later. But today I want to look at some of my favorite things that people say will make European brains decompose upon seeing, as well as throw a few of my own contenders into the ring. If you enjoy this video, there will be this big card at the end that takes you to another one like it, and less than 20% of y'all are subscribed with notifications on. If you sub and hit that bell icon, you'll never miss an upload, and you can always undo it later. I want to say ahead of time, just because a European couldn't fathom some of the things I'm going to show here, doesn't mean I endorse or like them. Chances are, on a normal day, I would shit all over some of the stuff I see in my day-to-day -day life. But just because I don't like it doesn't mean that it'll go away, and I'm one of the people that actually suffers from being around them, and God forbid I let a European look down on me for something I already think sucks. The European mind can't comprehend a Taco Bell placed in the dreamlike hills of the Windows XP screensaver. To a certain group of people, this is how heaven will look. If there's one thing you can count on in America, it's consistency. No matter where you go in the country, you can count on the same fast food chains to be nearby like an old friend. It doesn't matter if you're in Louisville or Seattle, you don't have to risk trying any new local food. If you get scared of change, you can just default to buying McDonald's again. There will always be a drive through or an underpaid service worker ready to take the same order you give every time you go to that restaurant. Even right next to the beach, God may smile down on you and place a Taco Bell cantina within walking distance. That way, after surfing on your way back home, you can eat some food that'll make you defecate your brains out within the next 24 hours. There's even a fully automated Taco Bell that has drive through lanes you'd usually see at a Wells Fargo. You know, the pattern might just be that there are a lot of different types of Taco Bells and you can find them everywhere, but hey, they're still reliable. Uh, wow, I can barely comprehend this one. The combination Pizza Hut, KFC, and Taco Bell. This even melts my brain a little. Like, the combination restaurant as a concept is something I can handle. In fact, it is usually these three restaurants in some combination, like KFC and Taco Bell together, but I've never seen all three at once. These many fast food logos together feels wrong. Like, it's a really squished strip mall and each restaurant only gets 25 square feet of space on the inside. Speaking of too many fast food restaurants right next to each other, we have the original microcosm of the concrete hell America is known for, this picture of Breezewood, Pennsylvania. For a lot of folk, this photo captures everything depressing about trying to touch grass in the states these days, and for others, it just looks kind of fun. To be fair, this angle of Breezewood is not very flattering, but if you zoom out a bit, it still looks like shit, but at least you can see some fields and green stuff next to it. The thing with Breezewood is that it's just one town of hundreds like it that are all over America. When you're making long road trips on the highway, there will be signs saying that the next exit has certain fast food restaurants you can eat at, places to stay, and gas stations to refuel at. These locations are made explicitly for us poor sods making the trek over hundreds of miles of asphalt to go to whatever city that looks exactly the same as the one we were coming from. Speaking of things you can't comprehend, I've always felt like these super highway lanes that are crisscrossing look like some shit out of a Lovecraft novel. Just gigantic concrete tentacles reaching out of the ground to swallow the earth, stealing all the space that used to be for humans, that way we can drive our isolated little tin cans on top of it. Driving on these is honestly pretty intimidating. I haven't had to do it much, but all the crisscrossing in vertically gifted lanes just feels bound for disaster. If there's one thing American society has perfected, it's making the people living in it feel like ants. Whether it's being a cog at the workplace, or a more literal visual like footage of these roads in action. Sped up videos of cars driving on them looks like ants on a hill scrambling around dragging crumbs back home. An apt metaphor. Another signature of the United States is us making bigger and bigger pickup trucks with limited returns. A Ford F-150 gets sold every minute in America. Technically more than one does, and these things just keep getting bigger and bigger. Toddlers and deer alike should fear the wrath of this monster as it barrels toward them. The driver can't even see them when they're close enough because of how high the truck is lifted and how long the nose is for the engine inside of. Power like this lets us tow around house-sized campers wherever the hell we want and to live at rest stops off at highways as God intended for us. And like, to be fair, that's a really nice camper. The interior of that thing is probably newly renovated and all modernized. People would kill to have a plot of land that they can just put that trailer on to live inside of permanently. It's a modern marvel. If you're wondering how these things are even capable of moving fucking houses, some trucks have a V8 engine. Don't ask me for specifics on how those work. Instead, look at this V8-powered chainsaw.
I had to watch that a few times before I understood what happened. I thought they were legit just revving the thing to show how loud it was, but then I realized it had actually just cut through that log the size of a man that fast. That chainsaw was lowered through that tree like it was just falling normally. It tore through what was in its way so quickly it was like there was no friction, just normal gravity speed. Now, to try and end all this road doomering, I do want to end this section on a positive note for America. The European mind couldn't possibly hope to understand what being able to drive from coast to coast in under two days time is life. They will never experience the magic of the American road trip as they lack the infrastructure. I probably won't ever make that drive either, but I could technically do it. That being said, this is ultimately a cope for not having any public transit. In Europe, the flights within the continent are cheaper than in the States, and they have these weird things called trains, as well as roads. I didn't know you could do both, but you know, still. Shout out Eisenhower for creating the interstate highways. They are a modern marvel of engineering, if a hard one to maintain. Dwight, sometimes you served an office well, and God damn, did you serve in the office? One thing that is super unique to the United States is the option to live in basically every climate. Swamp, desert, forest, tundra, beach, mountains, there's a little something for everybody. Not even Canada really gets that privilege. Both there and in the EU, you get the option between somewhere cold and somewhere even colder. In part because of this, the European mind never had to try and comprehend our god-tier air conditioner. They just never really needed that shit before. They were trying to stay warm, not get cool. Here in America, we have air conditioning units you can literally stick in windows yourself and have cool off the room it's in. I know they aren't European anymore, but I distinctly remember hearing about this a lot in the UK when they had a bunch of heat waves rolling through. They didn't have good AC over there, and the buildings were designed to keep heat inside because they were made when being cold was the problem. The window air conditioners may have helped at a time like that, but funny enough, something American minds have a tough time with is the way windows work in the UK. They only open a little bit, and rarely do they open straight up and down. So you can't stick an air conditioner in these like we can at home. There was probably a good reason for it, like it's a lot harder to fall out of them on accident. But British design has coincidentally all come together in this one instance to make those heat waves a real fucking problem. And for once, I'm not talking down on British folk when I say that. Climate change sucks and we're all gonna have to deal with that kind of thing. But wow, this next one is special. The European mind can't comprehend the Memphis Bass Pro Shops in Ducks Unlimited Pyramid. This is easily a wonder of the modern world in that you have to wonder how the fuck something like this ended up happening. On the image they used in this tweet, for some reason, they did a long exposure on the cars going in and out of the loop, which is really funny to me. Why would you want to emphasize how much traffic gets backed up in front of your retail store? In New York, at least it's like aesthetically pleasing with all the lights when they go flying by and stop all of a sudden. Ooh, here's a juicy one. Europeans can't comprehend what circumcision is. I'm willing to bet some Europeans don't even know what a foreskin is. They've never conceptualized a penis that could be missing one. Here in the States, they strap us down and cut that shit off when we're babies. Something about it being for sanitary reasons, but I don't buy it. I know how to wash my penis, and I still have to do that now anyways. I want my dick hoodie back. You can make an aesthetic argument that a wiener looks better with or without its pouch attached, but personally, I would have liked to make that decision myself, like later in life, when I would be capable of making decisions at all. Even if getting it done would suck a lot more as an adult, in which case I probably wouldn't have done it. Now, as an American, I know in concept that the food we make here is just way bigger and full of calories than in Europe, but being confronted with it face first is a different experience than just passively knowing I'm eating like shit. These are apparently the ingredients to make Ice Spice's signature Dunkin' Donuts drink. A heaping cup of ice, barely any water, four to eight pumps of liquid cane sugar, some cream, two to four pumps of coffee syrup, two to four pumpkin munchkins, as in the little bites you can get at Dunkin', those get put in the drink. I have no idea how you'd even slurp those. Then you add caramel drizzle, whipped cream, and more caramel drizzle. I don't know what part of the instructions I started making a pipe bomb on accident. This is just way too many steps. Like, I know a fast food worker is not doing this shit to the letter every time they got to make one of these drinks. You know, that's like fair enough in my opinion. <laughs> also, I just realized they do all the shit above the red line in a blender. So that explains how you can drink donuts. Oh boy, here's one that's gonna bring out some opinions. The European mind can't comprehend American tipping culture. I don't get this specific example very well either. I'm pretty sure the numbers are wrong. Like $3.22 is not 20% of $17.20. Maybe the register is calculating from the item before taxes and $7.20 is after taxes and then the tip is getting added to whatever. Don't get me wrong, it's very confusing, and to be clear, I don't think Americans like how tipping works in this country very much either. The reason you're meant to tip is because service workers kind of rely on them to make the full amount of their wages. Restaurants are legally allowed to pay them less and have their wages made up in tips, so a tip is more like a fee than an actual tip here in America. We're not fond of it ourselves, but I sometimes see visiting Europeans say that they won't pay tips in a sort of protest of how it's set up. I understand in concept, but the only person it ends up punishing is the minimum wage worker 
worker who's being underpaid, the restaurant doesn't really suffer from it. So it's important to pay it out so that the minimum wage worker actually gets the minimum wage. I think they should just be paid their wages, but unfortunately that isn't really up to me. And in the meantime, they shouldn't have to suffer for it. Anyways, that's all I got. That card I mentioned should be on screen. Anyways, this has been quite, and I'll see you all next time.